Hey gang, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Yannick. I hope you've all had a restful Easter weekend. Um, I want to talk about the title race, Arsenal, Liverpool, Man City. Um, of course, we all s <laughs> sat through that Arsenal-Man City game at the Etihad. Look man, loads of people gave Arsenal grief for essentially stinking the gaff up. Yes, I'm really annoyed with that game because it was not entertaining, even if you're, like, into the arts of defending. And sometimes you watch a team and you go, yeah, that's really, you know, compelling how they defended that, or it's really impressive, and it was, like, last gasp, and, you know, saving Private Ryan style, putting your body on the line, and people diving everywhere. I didn't really feel it was that. I just think it was a boring game. But, like, that's okay. Like, everyone's giving Arsenal grief. Why? Because they went and didn't lose at their main, like, well, one of the main title rivals away from home at the Etihad. Like, I'm a Chelsea fan. We got a 1-1 playing similar. Um, obviously, there were chances in the Chelsea City game. But, like, freaking hell, man. Like, if you get, look, be wound up that you weren't entertained. But don't, like, have a go at Arsenal. And, look, this is coming from a Chelsea fan who... You know, back in our prime glory days, Mourinho used to do this all the time. There'd be games and it'd be like, right, just don't lose. You know, and that's what boring, boring Chelsea came from. Trust me, Arsenal will not care if people said boring, boring Arsenal in that game when, if and when they win the title. Just wanted to reference that quickly. I do want to talk about uh, who's going to win the league, um, who I want to win the league, um, and who's probably what would be best for the league in terms of who wins. First of all, I need to nail my colours to the mast. Obviously, I'm a Chelsea fan. Um, and out of the three, the most, I don't want Arsenal to win the league. Obviously. Like, I do not want Arsenal to win the league. They're a London rival. They're red, we're blue. You know, um, they haven't won a league title in two decades. And it's like a point of pride. They've got more domestic trophies over Chelsea. Chelsea have... I say more European trophies. I don't think Arsenal have any European trophies. So there's like a good, strong, potent rivalry there. And they've been better than us in terms of general play. So you don't want them to win, you know. But it will probably be best for the league for Arsenal to win. And I'll get into that. Uh, similarly, speaking, you know, obviously this isn't Chelsea content on this channel. But I have to speak from, from, as from reference from a point as a Chelsea fan. Don't want Liverpool to win it either. You know, Klopp's farewell tour. I'd be very happy to see that ruined. Um, you know, again, appreciate Jurgen Klopp's time in the Premier League and what he's offered to it, but I also think, you know, often he can behave like a petulant child and a sore loser. So it'd be funny if he loses, you know, and that's not me digging out scousers that expect nothing less from a Chelsea fan, you know. Um, this is what rivalries are all about, right? It's all part of the theatre and fun. Um... And man, I guess like in terms of like my bitter, you know, sour fan. Again, like, I don't feel like I need to offer the disclaimer. Yes, my team is terrible at the moment, and what I'm about to say about Man City, I understand why Chelsea, how Chelsea got good. Um, although I'm really against state ownership, and you know, Roman Abramovich was an oligarch. There was a lot wrong with his ownership with Chelsea. Um, you know, and there's dark sides to it. I, I'm the first Chelsea fan to accept that. But it's not state ownership. And I do believe, because... But I do recognize, you know, you know two degree glass houses here. I definitely concede that. But, like, um, with Man City, there's something so soulless about Man City that I just like, let them win it. Do you know what I mean? Like, because doesn't, it doesn't grind my gears the same way it would with Arsenal or Liverpool. Because Man City, you know, they are state-backed. They're owned by, you know, a sovereign state. They just got the best player in the Premier League, players uh, even. They got the best manager. Um, you know, they've bought they've bought the best in class with everything. And I don't know. I just feel like, um, you know, they're the only team out of those guys to be relegated from the Premier League, I believe. Um, they weren't relegated in the Premier League, weren't they? Because their, their points total in the all-time Premier League table is quite far down. Like It's below Tottenham and stuff. So I guess that's because they spent time out of the Premier League. I know they did get relegated, but I'm trying to think it must be Premier League era. Because we were relegated in the 80s as well. Um, yeah, I just don't really care if Man City wins the league. So like, let them have it. Do you know what I mean? That's how I feel. Um, and that's how I'd like 
just go about my day easier. You know, oh, Pep Guardiola is the best coach in the world. It's Man City. They're owned by, you know, sovereign wealth. Uh, you know, they're, they're just, they're, it's sports washing in the West. What are you going to do? You know, it's it's just the way things are in football. But if, if Klopp wins it with the, you know, like I say, the Liverpool farewell tour, the, the media darlings, that will grind my gears. And if Arsenal win it as, um, as a London rival, um, yeah, I just hate it. But it would probably... If if you had to, if I had to choose like and step out of the Chelsea fan, what would be the best for the Premier League? It would probably be Arsenal. Now Arsenal have spent a lot of money, just like deceptively high actually, and um, you know, and they've got high, very very high wages as well. Their wage bill is very high. But I still think, despite all that, I think it would be best for the league. A because Arsenal haven't won it for twenty years, so there's that. You know, it's offering some variety in what we present as the best league in the world because there's so many different winners in the last 20 years. Um, obviously, that's changing with Man City. Um, so it would be good. It would be good with, uh, in that sense. Uh, also, it would be a positive story with Mikel Arteta finishing 8th, 8th and 5th. It's his first three seasons, I believe. Um, I think so, anyway. So he was like, you know, they finished eighth twice, and I think maybe they finished fifth following season. Anyway, you know, sticking with this manager um, when he was not qualifying for Europe, you know, multiple seasons, it's like it just shows you that continuity does help for all these impatient teams and fans, whether it's my club, Chelsea, or, for example, Man United is a good example as well. Um so it shows you, you know, you know, persistence and belief and patience is good. And um, yeah, they're quite a young team. They're, it's just, it's just probably, and and also they're just not Liverpool or Man City. And again, probably more salient point, they're not Man City. Um, you know, again, Liverpool because Liverpool have only won one title in this Pep versus Klopp era. And uh, if if um, Guardiola wins again people will reflect on it like oh yeah do you remember Pep versus Klopp but actually Klopp only won one out of seven or something and all the other ones were won by Pep so the, the rivalry is, isn't as a um, high profile or good rivalry as people think especially because there's so much bro bromance do you know we need like Mourinho versus Benitez or Mourinho versus Wenger, you know, or um, Alex Ferguson versus as many adversaries, like proper rivalries, not this like, you know, kissy, kissy, hug, hug stuff. I think it's a bit boring. Anyway, so that's what I think would probably be best. Um, who is going to win the Premier League? <sighs> well, probably not Arsenal. I'd say I know the run-ins uh, Liverpool and City I think have both got quite relatively easy run-ins and I don't think I just don't think Arsenal they are very very good and they'll you know in seasons past they would have been worthy Premier League winners in terms of the quality of team I just don't quite think they've got their juice um, they're just really good and well coached team and this is why Arteta deserves massive respect man because he was the favourite to be sacked in the Premier League for so long and he's like now like just like a really they just look like a really sensibly coached team that know exactly what they're doing and they believe in themselves the opposite of my club Chelsea now I think we've got great players um, I think if you compare the Chelsea and Arsenal squad um, I don't actually think there's much in it um, neither of Arsenal's goalkeepers I think are amazing obviously they've got the great centre backs you know, Gabriel and Saliba. Um, I mean, the fullbacks are fine, but I, I, I would, you know, Ben White, I'm not going, oh, get me Ben White as a right back, you know, converted centre back. Uh, I'd rather have Malagusto, Reese James, uh, you know, like conventional uh, dynamic fullbacks. Obviously, it's the midfield for me. Uh, that's so good for Arsenal. But even though Chelsea, I I'm, I'm, don't want to talk about Chelsea too much, but I know people talk about overpaying for Enzo Fernandez and Moises Caicedo, but they're still two really amazing midfielders. Do you know what I mean? I think Declan Rice is better than all of them. Um, he's, a, he's a little bit older as well, Declan Rice, and I don't want to like write off the other guys in terms of their improvement. But Erdegaard and Declan Rice, I think, is... You know, you could talk about Bukayo Saka and stuff being great, but I think Arsenal genuinely being that good is those two guys in the midfield. Um, and I just think those two setting the net, the tempo as well. And, you know, I think Odegaard's the captain. You know, Declan Rice is a leader. To have that much authority in the midfield of a football match, I think, is massive. I think that's why they're so good, to be honest, those guys. Um, 
But yeah, I don't think like it's the, it's an it's a sensational squad. It's just a really tight knit squad that's together and knows what they're doing. Um, but I don't look at them so like Man City. That's just an institutional winning machine. I don't see Arsenal like that. I still see Arsenal as just like this sort of really well coached underdog, even though high wages, high investment, or whatever. That's just the vibe they give off. I think probably because they've been not good for years. Um, Liverpool are currently favourites by Opta to win the Premier League, but I've just still got that feeling, you know. I, Man City were disappointing at the Etihad had the other day, but I still think Man City will just win. Man City have been poor against the other like big teams, including Chelsea. They they didn't beat Chelsea this season um, over the, both games. They they haven't been good against the traditional top six, and um, I don't know how many of them they've got left, but I do th- just feel like. They'll just win all the other games that aren't those guys. And you can't feel like it's guaranteed for for Liverpool. I mean, Liverpool beat Brighton 2-1. They were wobbly moments. Um, I still think I still think just Man City would do it. But anyway, I wanted to talk about it because there's a talking point at this point after that game. And obviously, we're in the run-in now, aren't we? The race to the title, as Sky Sports call it. So let me know what you think. Uh, comment down below your thoughts. Thanks for hanging out with me here at Football Yannick. Like and subscribe, and I hopefully see you guys back here very soon. Peace.